While it may not seem inconceivable to any well-educated individual that a man could produce over a billion offspring from one sex act, given that there are over 300 million sperm per milliliter of semen, I propose wondering what it would be like as a female to birth over 150 babies an hour. Such is the life of an inseminated fire ant queen. Long live the queen indeed. But while their lives may be short, as males in the colony, it's good to be the king. I'll bet my crown and kingdom that everyone in this room has been bitten by a red fire ant. A red imported fire ant, or reefa. Or at least you will, should you stay in Abilene much longer. That's in part due to their prevalence. Solenopsis invicta, the scientific name and species name, literally means unconquerable. I grew up here. I've been stung many times. And in the summers of middle school, I decided to study everything that is ants. Played cement on Super Nintendo. Went out into the field and the woods behind my house. Took my shovel, my boots, and a wheelbarrow lined and ringed with Vaseline so that the ants couldn't get to me. I dug up whole fire ant mounds. I studied them vigorously, so much so that I count myrmecology as a personal hobby. Myrmecology being a study of ants. Some of the things I learned back then, along with the research I've done most recently, <clears throat> has led me to believe that fire ants' domination of the native species can be attributed to the fact that they have a policy of slavery, a system of polygyny, and that they are an altruistic, unicolonial, multi-superorganism. To begin, I would like to go over one of the few examples in nature of slavery. Uh, Charles Darwin wrote in his Origin of Species how ant slavery got started. Apparently, one ant nest raided another, took the brood back to theirs to eat later, and the later phases, the pupa hatched. The chemical pheromones imprinted on the young the young imprinted on their host, masters, and it's what science terms slavery. All it is is they instinct took over once they got born and started getting to work. In my field research, I noted several instances of small black ants in the fire ant colonies. Indeed, in some cases, whole colonies, queen and all, were enslaved. <clears throat> Biologist Mark Moffat cites in his book, Adventures Among Ants, how ant slavery has actually gotten out of control. Uh, he notes that Reefa's uh, cousins, Amazon ants, literally will starve to death with food right in front of them if the slaves don't feed them. Uh, now I'll define Reefa polygyny. All polygyny means is that they have multiple queens, whereas normally ants only have one queen, a true monarchy. Uh, scientific notes published by entomologists in flcu.edu note how reefer polygynous colonies are more destructive economically and environmentally than their monogenous counterparts, as well as having populations two to three times large, presenting an increased probability of us getting stung. Finally, I must explain altruism, unicolonialism, and superorganismism. Reefa's S Invicta, the colonies are allied. They're eusocial to the point of operating like a single organism. It's almost as if they have one mind. Altruism means charity. It's the opposite of selfishness. Everything every single ant does is for the greater good of the whole species. Entomologist G. Bernasconi noted in Trends in Ecology and Evolution, that S. Invicta queens will cooperate at the earliest stages, the, the founding phase. So if two fire ant queens land together, instead of fighting to the death, they'll actually cooperate. One will pull guard while the other one digs until they can start laying eggs and propagate their project. Renowned myrmecologist Bert Holdobler and E.O. Wilson wrote in their book, The Super Organism, uh, that the current reef of strain actually became unicolonial in the 1970s. Apparently that's when they allied and started killing off the uh, older version and their strain became dumb. 
superorganism is defined in the same book as a eusocial colony that has features of organization that are analogous to the physiological properties of a single organism, uh, i.e. circulatory system, immune system, etc. Perfect example of S. Invictus organization and teamwork can be found in this YouTube video from the National Geographic. It's just taking a minute to warm up. This doesn't count on my time, does it? See, that's what I was asking. I stopped my time at 5.31. I'm doing good. Oh, Maybe. Okay. I'll buy you a new mouse, I promise. Can I get extra points for being a game here? And so, ultimately, we see in the end how fire ants' imperial domination over the native species, their prevalence, can be attributed to their policy of slavery, the system of polygyny, and the fact that they are an altruistic unicolonial uh, superorganism. It seems that the probability of us and our progeny being stung is on the verge of inevitability. Sometimes the truth hurts, I suppose. Perhaps through the aforementioned advances in science, humanity can someday become altruistic and enlightened enough to one day maybe be called superorganism, well, minus the slavery. <clears throat> Hopefully we can use the same technology to genocidally annihilate the red imported fire ant and so put an end to its destruction, pain, and economic environmental misery. Thank you. Are there any questions? It wasn't so bad, no, it wasn't. Any questions at all? <laughs>